Okay, so I have to start admitting that I have a problem. Because I ordered this thing off of eBay. And, I mean, I probably don't need it. I mean, probably is. <clears throat> wow, this stuff's really strong. I need to get in there. Um, probably is definitely, in this case, don't need it. Because I, I can't even imagine what I'm going to use it for. But, um, it was at a uh, ridiculously low price. And I thought it would be an interesting experiment in trying to fix something. So what I was able to score was one of the most popular oscilloscopes in all time, I think, a 465 from Tektronix, which is in much worse shape than I thought it would be. But, <laughs> like I said, um, used, not working, um, according to the listing, but we will see about that. Okay, so let's plug this thing in and see if we can get it produce anything. Um, nice power cord wrapping around the back there. Plugs in. Power on. Mm. Lights up. Uh, no light on the volts per division. Uh, intensity, focus, scale illumination. So something works there. Beam finder. Uh, no beam. Hmm. Yeah, looks like we're going to have to do something. Let's poke around a little closer. Okay, so I got the case off, and I think the first problem is the fuse here. And if... <clears throat> if we... Uh, can we see that? Can't see that. But it's blown. <clears throat> So that leads me to believe that it might have a problem with its power supply since um, uh, since it's not producing any dot on the screen. I'm not sure, but uh, this is the first place to start and I don't have any one and a half amp fuses. So I'll have to go out to the um, electronics store and pick some of those up. But um, yeah, that's it for now. Okay, so we've replaced the fuse. Now let's see what we get. Oh, I should turn the power on, though. There we go. Scale illumination. Oh, very good. Uh, my volts per division light isn't coming on. Intensity, turn that to mid. Turn that to mid. Beam finder. Still nothing. Still nothing. Beam finder.
Yeah, there's something, something that's not right. Yeah, nothing, nothing, nothing. Still nothing. So that's interesting. The scope is putting out a square wave on its calibration uh, trigger. Um, I haven't quite figured out what the uh, what the uh, which is good news. That means that um, they're uh, the power supply is probably working, but what that does mean that it might be the, um, the, the tube that is gone or the high voltage supply. And I just have to check the, uh, might have to check the tube. Now that's a, that's a dangerous little endeavor getting in there with the, um, 70,000, 7,000, um, volts, but, uh, no, yeah, we'll just be careful and see what we can find out. So now what we're going to do is we're going to test our um, low voltage supply. So we have our test points arrayed here and we need to see a plus five. Yeah, 499. We need to see plus 55. No, plus 15. 14.97, that's good. We need to see minus 8, minus 7.95, that's good. Now let's bump that up a range to our 200 volts. We need to see plus 110, 109.7, and plus 55, 54.9. So low voltage supply is all good to the ability for this thing to measure and so now we go on to the next step in the troubleshooting diagram PP. Okay, so you know what? I'm not going to check the negative 2450 volt supply because I have no way of checking that. Um, uh, but push the beam finder and hold it in. No traces visible. So now we check test point 1486 for an unblanking pulse plus 15 volts to depending on 75, depending on the intensity. Okay. So there does seem to be a trigger waveform for the uh, for the test point 1486 z-axis, which leads us to a check CRT circuit. Hmm. So checking the CRT circuitry means removing the high voltage cover, four screws. Off it comes. Now, remember to not be all pokey with your fingers in there. Okay, so I did some Googling and, um, well, spent some time on the Googler. And, uh, man, oh man, the, uh, 
the amount of extra IQ points you get having Google is absolutely amazing. Just like uh, just like they say on XKCD. Anyways, the um, there's a couple of good resources, uh, lots of good resources on the internet. I found a copy of uh, this to print out. You saw that in a previous um, segment. I found a copy of this to print out, and on the on Yahoo there is a tech scopes group and uh, googling for repairing or searching for repairing a 465 brought up an excellent suggestion which is if this fuse blows which it does in this scope check um, two things q1418 and the components around it because if this or this capacitor are short well this capacitor in, in particular is the is the critical one because if that shorts to ground then you're just got unregulated 15 volts it'll blow that fuse so this is a tantalum capacitor capacitors are kind of flaky over time anyways this is an old scope so I am going to check this capacitor and this transistor to see if there's anything wrong with it <clears throat> now where those are physically located in the circuit is up in the upper left hand corner and we find that out by by looking at our grid location and the grid schematic, which is this thing right here. So, up there we've got to test a couple of things. Let's see what is going on with that um, C1416 and what's going on with this transistor, which is mounted in a, uh, in a case. And I don't know if I can get a good picture of it, um, but I can remove it. Um, uh, it's just got a couple of, of, of nuts that are holding the heat sink on. It's nicely potted, or nicely jacked, and you can just pull that puppy out like that. And it, uh, gives us an easy way of testing that, and then we can also test that capacitor. Okay, so let's test the transistor. What do we have here? We do we have no. Okay. Diode drop there. Diode drop there. It's either E B C or E B C, but the base is the middle in any event. So we have our diode drop there, and we don't have a diode drop across the emitter to the collector, I don't think. And we don't have a short circuit, I don't think. Let's see. Yeah, no short circuit. So the transistor's okay. On to the capacitor. That's plus 15, going straight to ground. And that should not happen. So I'm thinking that it is the capacitor that has bit the bullet. All right, let's pop that off and replace it with what the guys on the Googler say, a 100 um, microfarad, 50 volt. 105 degree C electrolytic and see if that helps. Okay, let's try that. All right, no short circuit. Or is there? No, there isn't. Once that capacitor charges up. All right, well, let's see what we get when we turn her back on. Fuse goes in. All right, so pop the fuse back in, plug the baby in, and let's see what we get. Alrighty. It's a trace. 
that pot seems a little fudgy. Focus. Turn the intensity down. Oh, look at that. I do believe we have a functioning oscilloscope. All right, so what was the problem? The tantalum capacitor that um, controls a power resistor that runs an oscillator that um, drives the charge pump for the high voltage circuit had shorted. So replace the tantalum cap with a um, uh, aluminum electric lytic and Bob's your uncle. Man, oh man, that was kind of fun. Yeah, the pots are a little dirty, but uh, that's to be expected in something that's a, as old as I am, practically. And uh, so, yeah, so let's um, see if we can put a, uh, see if the calibration works. And uh, yeah, wow. Look at that. We have a nice happy square wave. <laughs> yeah, I guess the uh, the next question is, do I uh, get this baby calibrated? I think I might. Or do I go in and start doing all the cleaning of it? Uh, the cover doesn't look too bad. I don't know if I necessarily have to go too crazy about cleaning it up. Maybe just a toothbrush to get the uh, gunk out of the, the knobs. But uh, yeah, hmm. Five for a dollar, those capacitors. So that makes it 20 cents repair.